My name is Peter Zellner, and I'm going to be uh, MC in the afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're very honored to have the mayor of Los Angeles here, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, and uh, we're going to get started because we have a tight schedule. We'd like to also uh, get through some awards and have a discussion with the jurors and the winners, many of you have flown here from all over the world. So I'll just say a few quick words. I'll introduce our director, Eric Moss, who's going to introduce the mayor. But this is the uh, award ceremony for the Los Angeles Clean Tech Corridor competition. We're sitting in the middle of the Clean Tech Corridor here at SciArc. This is, in fact, round zero. And uh, the goal of the competition that we ran was to think about the relationships between uses on the ground, cultural, residential, uh, commercial, and potentially industrial. And uh, just a really quick anecdote, there was an interesting article in the New York Times recently about desktop manufacturing. And the example they used was a uh, biomedical researcher, uh, a surgeon, and a designer making prosthetic legs for $6,000. They're printing them on their desktop in San Francisco in the market district for entities. And what it reveals is that the shape of and the meaning of industrialization in the 21st century is changing. We're going from 19th to 20th century large Fordist models towards something that can be done in a very granular and a very localized way. And this has the potential to completely reinvigorate the economies of our cities. So clean tech is a little bit part of that. It asks questions like, how do new industrial uses reside next to residential facilities or for that matter, institutional and educational facilities like our own? So what does that future look like? So with that, I'm going to have uh, Eric Moss, our director, come and say a few comments and introduce the mayor. Thank you. Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, pleasure to be here, and I think an, an important moment uh, for SciArc, and we hope for the city of Los Angeles. This is the second annual competition that SciArc has run with very special participation from the mayor's office, the councilwoman's office, the CRA, and national and international figures involved in architecture and planning. There's an old joke, still probably useful, that when you take off from JFK, you're immediately over LA. Uh, and, and this harkens back to what we all understand is an extremely horizontal city, a city that, that, that stretches north, south, east, and west in many directions, and I think arguably is still searching for a definition of itself. I think it's also uh, worth keeping in mind that in discussions of international cities, Los Angeles and Shanghai and Paris and Chicago and Guangzhou and London and New York City, and inevitably in a discussion of, of important cities around the world, Los Angeles plays a role in that discourse. Oddly, though, because Los Angeles, and I think this is really the reason we're here, uh, Los Angeles is an extremely young city, probably, certainly in comparison to the cities where I, I just mentioned. Wouldn't want to call it an adolescent city that may have other implications, but it's important to understand as much as we've done that there's an enormous and potentially an extremely promising future for this city in front of us. And I think that's why the discourse supported by uh, Antonio Villarosa, Jan Perry, Councilman Guizar, and others is essential to us going forward. I think there have been over many years all sorts of discussions about what Los Angeles is, what it means, what it should be, all of that. I think what, what the mayor has done, which is quite unique, is given a very essential voice to a discussion of the city and city planning, an emphasis and a consistency. I think in the past, there have been moments, sporadic moments, with a discussion and then it moves. It might be Warner Center and it moves. It might be Melrose and it moves. It might be downtown and it moves. Westwood and it moves. So because there are so many venues in this city, I think there is a history of, of emphases and renewed emphases 
I think we have now a focus. I think we have a consensus that the way to make all of this happen in the future is to construct a team of people like you people, of political figures in the city, administrative fig figures in the city, public and private. I think that's an important new step, and I think the leader of that team, and clearly he is the leader of that team, is the mayor of Los Angeles, Antonio Viragosa. Please welcome the mayor of Los Angeles. To the team. First of all, let me thank uh, the folks who submitted entries in this uh, wonderful competition. They're all winners, frankly. And, and the one thing about SIARC uh, is that uh, when they put out a competition, people from all over the world respond. Uh, this is a world-class institution for architecture, and I am very, very proud that they happen to be sited here in the city of dreams, uh, in the city of hope, uh, and in the city where the world comes together. So we thank Eric and all of the professors and all of the entrants who uh, submitted a competition. Give them a big hand. Because as Eric said, this is our second uh, event together. Last year, uh, we did the SIAR Futures Initiative, I think it was called, where we looked at mass transit and what the city could look like. Um, and this year, uh, we're looking at what we could do uh, here in the heart of downtown uh, at uh, a crossroads between the east side and downtown and going to the west side, uh, what we can do to create a clean tech uh, manufacturing center corridor uh, that uh, will be the site uh, for clean tech here uh, in Los Angeles. You know, when I got elected five years ago, and maybe it was audacity, but I said that we were going to make LA the cleanest, greenest big city in the United States of America. And that took a lot of hotspot because I think, as we all know, LA has the, among the cities with the dirtiest air. Uh, it's a city with an addiction to the single passenger automobile. It's a city that, uh, you know, tore down its public transportation system, which actually was a very robust transportation system. And it's a city that is as congested as any in the United States. Our public utility is the dirtiest still today uh, of any public utility in the United States. We have a 44% addiction to coal. So early on we said uh, we're gonna change that. And uh, I'm very proud that uh, today at the Department of Water and Power, we were 3% renewables. Uh, today we're at 19% renewables. We've got a plan to move away from an addiction to coal uh, at the DWP and in the city of Los Angeles. Our effort to clean up the port is the most far-reaching effort to clean up the port in, a wor in the world. Uh, 7,500 new trucks uh, at the port. Uh, reduced diesel emissions from trucks by 80% in the last uh, few years. Uh, reduced PM, uh, particulate matter, DPM and uh, Knox and Sox uh, also uh, close to 50%. Our clean building standards are the toughest of any big city in the United States. We have more LEED certified buildings than any city in the United States. And very importantly, we recycle more trash than any big city in the United States and use the same amount of water that we did 31 years ago when there were, what, two million less people. So what are we doing with all of that? We're leveraging it. We're leveraging it to create green jobs. We're leveraging it to create uh, Los Angeles as the situs for the clean tech uh, manufacturing in the United States. We already are a clean tech capital, but we want to build on that. And we think the clean tech corridor uh, can be uh, a catalyst uh, 
for incubating clean tech jobs, for creating and building on the foundation of the clean tech industry here in Los Angeles. So it was important to us to get a vision for what that could look like. Because dreams, uh, you know, have to have meat to them. They have to have uh, a, a face, if you will, uh, uh, for what uh, those dreams can be. And this uh, competition is an opportunity for us to think through uh, just what, uh, not just what the clean tech corridor can do, and look like, but what it can do to revitalize and green uh, LA. So uh, I want to thank you all uh, for your efforts. We're very fortunate to have Cyark here, right here downtown, and uh, in the middle of an art district uh, where creativity has a confluence. And uh, I'm excited. I got an opportunity to see uh, the winning entries, uh, and I can tell you uh, there's a lot there. And you know, actually. There's a lot that you could bring together. I mean, that's the beauty of a competition. There's each one of them had their own unique uh, vision statement. So uh, thank you so much and to the winners. Maybe we could take a picture real quick because I am going to have to get on if we could take a picture with the winners up here and uh, all of you, if we could do that. The winners. And I wanted to be here today for a couple of reasons. One of which is I, I used to work at Sci Art many years ago when they were on Berkeley Avenue in Santa Monica in much more humble, uh, a much more humble abode. And uh, when Director Moss was just Eric, and uh, people had their dogs in the uh, workspace. That may still be true though, right? Okay. Anyway. So I have, I have a history with SciArc, and I was ecstatic when I was elected that they chose to locate here in downtown Los Angeles, and particularly, as the mayor mentioned, in an area that is known for innovation and vision and creativity and, and uh, let's say, fewer rules. That's, that's the way we see it. And so having SciArc here was sort of the icing on the cake to have all of this creative energy that actually had a framework, professors, students, interest, enthusiasm, and willingness to try something different. And so when I needed help, I of course work with our own city folks, and then our city architect is here. Uh, yeah, there you are. She's right here, Deborah Weintraub, and 
also want to recognize your senior lead officer here, uh, Officer Jack Richter over there uh, standing up. But we marshaled our own city resources uh, because I needed a new senior center in South Los Angeles and I came to Sciarc and I talked to uh, Director Moss and uh, was able to get help and uh, do my project as a studio and we actually have a design and we assembled the financing and we're actually going to build our senior center at 76 in Avalon and the person who helped us was also a student of his and he's probably out and gone now but it's been happy. So um, we actually do listen to your ideas and we do implement your ideas and that's why this organic process was so interesting and engaging to me. Not only does the school believe in our potential, but obviously through this competition and, and, and presenting these ideas to us, you believe in the potential for having a clean tech corridor and your input helps us reimagine our city and so I hope that you will continue to do that and continue to be our partners. I have to say that it's, it's a joy to behold SciArc uh, taking its rightful place worldwide uh, as a, a global academic institution and being highly regarded in pr producing these innovations and, and possibilities, not just about our own city's future, but all over the globe. I, your, your willingness uh, to engage in, in, in our professional development of projects and to use the students' uh, abilities uh, help us realize the significance of our work and this new frontier of revitalizing fallow and underutilized uh, industrial corridors and to reach beyond residential into job creation and emerging markets is extremely significant and I would venture to guess that you're far, far ahead of the curve and that your ideas in a short time will be considered extremely uh, pragmatic and right on point. So I want to thank all of the innovative entrants and, and to Director Moss and the entire staff of uh, the school. Thank you for uh, giving us here in the city this opportunity. Not only have you given us uh, opportunity for thoughtful consideration of your own vision, as you can see from the comments that I made, uh, we will put your visionary ideas into reality because they serve as an excellent roadmap uh, to taking us even further ahead into the future. So congratulations to the judges, the participants, and everyone who's invested their time and energy in reimagining our community, and I want you to know that I truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, um, Jen Perry. These are wonderful comments, and um, with that, we're going to start the uh, awards uh, ceremony properly, and I would ask that one member from each team please come to the podium and accept your award. And then at a later point, um, we're gonna have you join our panelists. Uh, when you're finished, you can take a seat here at the panel, and we're gonna start a discussion with our panelists. And we're gonna have our first, second, and third uh, place professional winners. Um, that is the team from Oslo, Norway here, Konstantin, uh, Ralph, and Alexandra. And then uh, in second place, our team from Paris, um, Thomas Sari and, and, and Co. And uh, in third place, we have Larry, who's here now. So we're going to have a conversation between the jury and the professional winners of the content of this competition, some of the solutions. So we'll probably have to get another chair up here as well. But okay, so in first place, um, from Oslo, Norway, uh, Ralph Bertram is here to accept the award. Professional, um, welcome to Los Angeles, and congratulations. Here are some of the boards. So you can see here this scheme proposes uh, an infrastructure of sorts of uh, water and substance purification uh, devices that would be spread across the urban fabric. And uh, again, for those of you who want to look at this work in more detail, the exhibition in the library opens at 4 p.m. so you'll be able to see the boards that we've mounted and also talk to the winners in second place, laptop from Paris, France, and Los Angeles, California, uh, Thomas Sevi. Congratulations. 
And here we see a, a district scaled uh, entry that uh, specifically targets uh, this area, the Arts District, and produces a series of architectonic uh, interventions along with a clean tech manufacturing facility that you see here on the, on the right of the board uh, behind the winner. And in third place, uh, a collaborative team uh, represented here today by Mia Lair, Vera Happel with Mia Lair and Associates, Elizabeth Timmy and Jim Sir from Los Angeles, California, third place. accept the award, um, that would be great. So we're now going to just quickly look through, these are the, the uh, third place winners here, a sort of large green network behind the winners, uh, basically stretching up and down the Los Angeles River with a series of interventions, bridges and, and photovoltaic systems. And here, uh, one of our honorable mentions, also from Los Angeles, California, uh, Escher, the Nguyen Architecture, uh, also hometown favorites, uh, Frank Escher here to take the award. Congratulations. Really amazing that I think so many entrants are here today from all over the world. I think it's a testament to the 
importance of, of this city, I think, globally as a, as a center for experimentation, and also hopefully uh, this school is a platform for discussion of these issues. All right, and this is Jihun's scheme, which very interestingly, as you see illustrated uh, in these drawings, actually is located across from us here at Sire over the MTA railway yards and uh, proposes a sort of uh, industrial intervention that also bridges creative uses. Okay, in uh, third place, uh, last year's first place winner, in fact, Ryan Lovett and Jesse Keenan from the uh, Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation at Columbia University. Um, they're not able to uh, receive the award, but Ryan's mother, Dr. Yvonne Bryson, uh, is here to collect the award on his behalf. So congratulations for the second time. Thank you, congratulations to your son. Uh, and we can see their scheme here, also river-focused, also uh, Syarc and MTA yards adjacent, uh, proposes a scheme that deals with fruit production and consumption throughout applied technology and economic development zones in LA. I think there's somebody at the door. Uh, hello? Okay, and finally, our honorable mention in the category of student is Lydia Lee Campanian. Is Lydia here? Yes, great. And this scheme uh, proposes a farm called the Red Door Farm, sited at the Cornfield Arroyo Seco specific plant area for living, working, and growing food for consumption. Okay, so um, those are the entries. And what I'd like to do now, if I may, is um, I'd like to start a conversation with a few prompts. Uh, we have with us, uh, in addition to Eric Moss uh, and Ming Fung uh, from uh, Asire, we're joined by Sam LaBelle, who is the editor of the California edition of the Architects newspaper. And uh, the Architects newspaper was a co-presenter and organizer of this organization, so welcome, Sam. And of course, I mentioned Ming Fung is here. She is our academic affairs director and uh, generally a uh, wonderful person around Sire. And finally, Romel Pasquale, who's the deputy mayor with a specific focus on economic and planning issues, who was on the jury. And so what I'd like to do now is, if I may, I'm going to sort of skip back to the very beginning. And uh, perhaps uh, between uh, the panelists and uh, on the jury and the winners, we could have a little discussion about the topic itself. So I'm going to put out a few questions. Um, you're welcome to take them in order, any order. Everybody, please just speak at once. So I think the first question I would have, and, and given the diversity of entries and uh, what the mayor referred to as the kind of applicability of many of these schemes, um, maybe we could start with the jury of possible Ming and Romel and talk about some observations that you made generally about the scheme specifically, if you wish, and then we'll have the competitors respond. So the first question would really be, like, what, what, what do you really see as the long-term impact of this work? What are ways for us to move this forward? Uh, does the clean tech quarter make sense yet, or is there more work to do on the topic? Question number one, two, or three. Let's start with one. Okay, so what, what, is, what is the clean tech quarter? Let's start with that. That's a basic one. It still puzzles me. I think that when we began uh, looking at all of the entries and just, you know, Romel, maybe you can uh, jump in, what, what the jury, uh, what the jurors really discussed uh, was uh, something which has more to do with uh, projecting the future and looking at not what is a remedial way of fixing the problem, the current problem that we have not only in Los Angeles but everywhere else in the world. But uh, we were looking for what we uh, really were very clear about, which has to do with an idea competition. By that we mean that we we wanted to uh, begin thinking of what uh, what would be the future technology that would uh, help make the city green and at the same time create new opportunity and incentive for the city to regenerate it itself. Um, the, 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 the corridor, uh, the green tech corridor, as you know, I think has like uh, 
four different sections, I don't know. And, um, and each one of the, each one of the quarter uh, of the section um, reflect a, uh, a certain way that the, the city organized itself uh, in terms of zoning and in terms of uh, opportunity for development, whether it is the art district that where we are right now to the salvage and the manufacturing uh, sector. Uh, but uh, we wanted to throw uh, those ideas away and we were looking for um, projects that uh, either address the, uh, the clean tech corridor from a uh, larger scale all the way to a smaller scale, which is, a, uh, which is what we call the architecture scale. And, and we did not want to reject a project which may have a seminal idea which would uh, affect a, a, a focal point, a, a not, not just a neighborhood, but just a city block, and that could generate itself and propagate throughout the, throughout the city. So a lot of it's not just a contaminated, but it actually have the capacity to change the city, uh, the urban, uh, at, the, at the much larger urban scale. And, and, and with that, uh, many, many ideas which uh, uh, were technic uh, technology, uh, technology with technology which is challenging for us. And on the panel, we have a, um, people who were very, very uh, keen on testing the engineering and the feasibility of those proposals. But overall, at the end, the juries were much more interested in the, um, what we call something which would be much more visionary. Thank you. Um, let me uh, first say to the entrants and those who uh, won the competition and placed an honorable mention, it just excites me that you guys came from all over the world to come to Los Angeles. And I'm thinking, you know, from Norway, from London, from France, and from the exotic place of West Virginia, or Virginia, right? But you guys have all come to Los Angeles, and let me, let me just tell you, this is, Los Angeles tomorrow is gonna to experience a very historic event. And I think it, it's, it signifies really what LA is about and what this competition somewhat is about, is, is that we're gonna be shutting down streets in Los Angeles to make, to reimagine what LA could be. It's called Cyclovia, seven and a half miles. I'm only saying it because you're here today, and if you're here tomorrow, please join in. The reimagination of LA is, how do you see a place that folks are not used to seeing? How do you see a, a set of streets where cars are, are no longer on, and it's about people, it's about recreation, it's about creativity? And when we were thinking about uh, the Clean Tech Corridor several years ago, and the mayor essentially said, guys, and this is what he says, we got this opportunity, what do you want to do about it? You're creative, what can we do about it? And, and so it, it forced us to reimagine what it can be. What this competition did, and, and me sitting on the panel with some, some great uh, panel folks, was that this, there was some sense of reality. And, and, and looking at all of the entrants, it made, me, it made it more clear that things can be done. That as wildly crazy as some of them are, and let me just tell you, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a policy guy, though I do have an urban planning and somewhat of a design background. I haven't done that in years. But some of the things you look at, you go, is it possible in Los Angeles? And you realize, if it's possible to close down streets in a place that, that cars dominate, it is possible for things like this to occur. And, and it was quite exciting going through the, the, um, the um, applications and really looking at one of the questions you said is, what is a long-term impact? I think long-term impact is that, is that there are so many different opportunities for, for not only just from a design aspect of the thing to not only from an economic development aspect, not only from a grading aspect, but certainly from this in place of innovation. So long-term impact, folks are thinking. Folks are realizing that it can be done, and, and that is the first step, I think, for long-term impact. Um, and, can some of this stuff work? I think that was one of your questions, Peter, early on, was yeah. can, can this work? You know, I, I live in a world of, my world the past five years has been looking at plans to say, can they work? 
And I looked at these plans and I said, yes, this can. And I think it, it requires us to really come together, not only on the financing piece, but certainly on the, okay, how can we make, how do we come together to make something like this happen? Because it's not just about a government entity trying to push for this to happen. It requires the designers, it requires the, the residents, it requires the business sector, it requires so many other folks. And I think what the applications and, and the designers have laid out for us is that kind of collaborative approach that I think can only happen here in Los Angeles as you will see tomorrow. So I always bring it back to tomorrow because there is something special about what it represents. And I think what we saw today in the designs is here. Um, what I'm excited about. Peter, let me say something very quickly. To set the context of this discussion, particularly for visitors who have come from around the world, I think what's important to understand is aside from the design discourse, there's a public policy discussion, a public policy discussion, which is at stake here. And what's interesting is if you look at SciArc in Los Angeles and its history in maybe the past 15 or 20 years, and the context for innovation in design, in architecture, and looking ahead now to see whether Los Angeles can again move the discourse, but not so much in architecture, or in big architecture, in, in big planning, big projects. If you look at the train that goes from Shenzhen to Guangzhou to Shanghai to Beijing, if you look at a country that has the temerity, and certainly this is debatable, to move rivers from the south of China where there's water, to the north where there is none. Granted, this is a substantial debate. If you look at the presidential election in South Korea, the candidate stands up and he says, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna connect the Han and the Nakdong River, $20 billion US, and change the, the, the transit, the recreation, the whole conception of not only South Korea, but the interrelationship of Japan and South Korea and China and so on and so on. And then you look at America, which in many ways, whether it's Katrina, Katrina and New Orleans problems in, in all of America's cities, and a clear inability to set a public policy and to implement projects of a substantial scale, to stay with it, to sustain a point of view. People who have been in America for a while understand there is a discourse run by Michael Dukakis, who was once a presidential candidate, trying to implement high-speed trains, the kind that's been running from Tokyo to Osaka for 25 years. So what we thought, and I think what, what we're, so, we're so appreciative of in terms of the interest and the energy is that there is an aspiration that we could collectively enunciate a policy or policies, and they would suggest to Antonio, to Jan, to various political uh, uh, engines, not only here but around the country, that these kinds of discussions are important and they're, as we just noted, plausible and doable. So to make these discussions with a lot of intelligent young architects is one thing, and that's important. To make them as if they're plausible and America can do the kinds of things that happen in East Asia, to some extent in Europe, and this is really essential that, that, that America demonstrate a capacity, and I think more important, a will to do those kinds of things. So I think this is really the foundation with Peter uh, and Sam and the jury were pursuing, uh, were insisting on that that's possible here too. And I think the work you see is, is the result of that aspiration. I think, I think just, to, just to pick up on that, the policies are not in Los Angeles, we are very aware that policy are not enough because we, one of the, in, in, for, with clean type, you have to be partnering with the DWP, the other agency, the, the, the developers, so, so that it's, it's really clear when we were looking and reviewing the, the, the work that 
we, we wanted to look at a different way. It's not just a top-down uh, decision of, because, it, because we know here it's impossible to have a top-down decision or have this kind of democratic way of not in my backyard mentality. But it was very important that, that one could be really strategic with how do you work with you know, setting policy and then at the same time figuring way of bringing in the people who are actually are, are, able, are going to be able to implement that. Yeah, and uh, Peter, I just wanted to uh, mention one more thing uh, to that question you mentioned. Is this uh, feasible and, and what do we accomplish? And uh, I wrote in my bad handwriting, I was just taking notes on that very question. Uh, and. Uh, First of all, we, uh, what we've accomplished with this, um, what we set out to, actually I think we've accomplished more than I thought we would. Uh, and, and this is the second time around for our competitions, and this one I think we're, we're getting better and better as it goes. But uh, uh, some of the things I think we've already accomplished, um, uh, for one, we, we've gotten people from fields that don't normally talk together to talk together. That's, that's a huge start. We have uh, uh, landscape architects and architects and engineers and urban planners uh, working on designs together, participating in the jury together, and that, I mean, that's the future of where things are heading, and, and the more we can encourage that, the better. But also we have people from different city departments that also don't talk together on this jury and here, and um, people from the CRA, people from the MTA, people from the mayor's office, um, and that, that's very important as well. Uh, and, and then most importantly, uh, we've uh, raised awareness of a major civic issue, which is this clean tech quarter, and how to reimagine Los Angeles uh, in terms of the new uh, green economy that, uh, that could very well be the future engine of the city. Um, but also, in addition to that, there are some ideas whether or not one scheme or another scheme is going to be the, the, the answer. I mean, that's up to the city. Uh, uh, by the way, is holding a, uh, an RFP for the uh, Clean Tech Manufacturing Center. So this, this, these ideas inspire ideas for that, and I encourage anybody participating in that to look at that. Um, but there's some very simple ideas that I think will inspire change in the area from the various competitors here, including you guys. Um, new technologies, icons of sustainability for the area, uh, green plazas in the area, um, internal transportation systems within this area, uh, bios wells, the, the, the uh, incorporation of agribusiness, uh, the uh, combination of art, and, and green, even having uh, galleries and sustainable offices and kind of rethinking industrial hubs that in the past have only been arts district has been kind of the, the MO of uh, rethinking industrial space, but now the new MO is, I think, art and clean tech manufacturing and clean tech thinking. And, um, and uh, so I think these are just, just very few of the many. Also rethinking the LA River, which all, basically everybody was able to do as well. Um, so I think, yes, I think there's a huge impact, and uh, whether or not that's going to be one scheme or another scheme, who knows, but those ideas are certainly very, very valuable. I think, I think from a um, selfish point of view, I think the biggest impact is that we have a lot of architects who enter the competition, and uh, this, it, uh, the, the architects finally are taking back the, 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 the idea that we, uh, we can design to be, because I think that that is starting in that point. We, we kind of threw that way and gave all the that out in, in the 30s. And, um, and now, this has become more and more evident and clear that, that, that architects are much, much more engaged with, uh, with not just building a building, but, but really affecting what we call the built world, the built environment. In the 60s, you know, whenever we talk about built environment, it sounds like it's really, uh, kind of really and, and I think that that to me is very, very significant because uh, we, are, we are now looking at project and design solutions which actually address not just uh, remaking a city from an abstract or diagrammatic or from a just pure planning point of view, but really with this design solution that actually are very, very concrete. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, to both of those points, I mean, obviously, there are many issues that were addressed. Um, 
it, it is very interesting to me also, if you look at, look at the ROS of our sponsors, we, we have organizations across the private and public world, and clearly working at the scale require, requires that sort of integration. Um, but what I thought we would do now, uh, to sort of follow on these comments, is now go through the first, second, and third place entries. So we're gonna start with number one, we're gonna put some of the, the uh, work up, and uh, Ralph, if you would not mind perhaps trying to integrate uh, your comments into the ongoing discussion. Maybe the first question for you, in fact, be what, what is clean tech? Um, clean tech to us, um, I think it would be very much what has already been talked about, that it is not so much about new technology and inventing new technology, but it's more about integrating uh, technologies and ways of thinking that you already have and trying to merge them into something that could contribute in a certain of future uh, joint venture to create a more sustainable uh, environment and a more sustainable city. Um, and I think in, in response to that, uh, should I illustrate? Yeah, sure. <laughs> because um, basically what we did uh, was to implement uh, certain uh, objects within the urban tissue uh, of LA and specifically of the clean tech corridor uh, that are able to generate a very local uh, effect uh, and sort of by implementing it in the existing infrastructure that the city already has uh, and combining that with an invisible part of the infrastructure which is for example sewage so on, and combining those into certain knots of uh, where where things concentrate and uh, come certain focal points within the grid, um, they are able to create incentives for development. So we don't want to subscribe so much uh, zoning of certain areas or uh, to subscribe what would be where, but more to generate a system that could generate uh, developments, sustainable developments that can grow on that. And I think the strategy in itself is that as well, that it's not a strategy that you implement top, uh, from the top of, how do you say that, top down. Uh, but instead you, you, you give the tissue something and you, you allow markets and you allow businesses, you allow things to react to that incentive and it's sort of it becomes an evolutionary strategy rather than rather than a revolutionary, you know, I would say. Okay, thank you, Brown. So we're going to now look at the second place we uh, entry by laptop. And this is Thomas. So um, I want to say that we're very satisfied that uh, such a dreamful, uh, dreamlike, uh, dreamlike project be validated by, uh, by a jury. Uh, we've been trying, uh, we've been trying, we, we, have, we basically arrived in Los Angeles two months ago. Uh, we now work and live in Los Angeles, and uh, we went on site, and uh, we really loved the, 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 the site, the warehouse. And basically, uh, we wanted to keep as much of the short story in Los Angeles as it is now. So we decided to go over, over the building, over the, way, the warehouse, and uh, do you understand how can how can things work? I think uh, the easiest way to make things work is not uh, in this uh, uh, intervention, not start from scratch. So we want to we want it to keep as much as the existing as possible of the existing building. So the intervention we we've been trying to do is as explicit as possible and as light as possible. So every part of this project is, uh, is totally doable and constructible. And uh, I think it's also very important, it was very important for us, not even though it's an ideal ID competition, not to give the public uh, any sign of what could be read that we could not actually do. So I don't think there's any way we could actually turn downtown into a park or into, uh, or into uh, a garden. So 
even though we might have been cutting a few palm trees to actually, uh, to actually uh, do our intervention, we call it, by the way, clinoplasty because it had to be like a very light and precise and sharp intervention. And uh, we've been trying to be as architects, as more creative as, as possible, without uh, talking about what everybody kind of know after, uh, as we almost have, we almost have our body from us, look, talking about uh, maybe technique, technical, structural, and we will be trying to focus on uh, what could actually uh, uh, be uh, as, more, as more creative as possible. Uh, for example, I think that uh, when I'm speaking to my to my mother about <coughs> being green, she I think she keeps on telling me that uh, as long as you have apple tree in your garden, you're you're green. Uh, when I talk to my father, I think he's Greek. As as if you can build this Greek, you're going to be really green. And when I talk to my brother, my small brother, he thinks that as long as you have a pool, uh, you're green. Uh, so. We've been trying to just show the people that, that are going to look at us because I'm sure that they are going to be uh, a, great, uh, a lot of exposition with the project. So we, we've been trying to show the public what we could obviously do. Um, I want to uh, thank my team members, um, Bureau Happel, Jim Sir, um, Elizabeth Timmy, and uh, Astrid Deal and Jihan Boo from my office because it definitely, we learned a lot along the way. And uh, I want to thank uh, Inside Art for holding this competition and actually for showing their commitment to downtown by being here, hello. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then I, I want to address the issue of temerity, um, which I think is a huge issue. So uh, although I think our scheme does in many ways think about catalytic projects that are strategic, that set things in motion, we would like to think that there's a huge investment, an investment that happens um, in a realistic time frame to allow for all these projects to start taking off. So the idea that little, you know, interventions are gonna, you know, cumulatively make a difference, I've kind of, um, you know, again, uh, with the advent of high-speed rail, we've watched how, you know, uh, France implemented their high-speed rail program in 20 years, uh, China came along, did the same number of miles in seven years, and I hope we take five years to do it. So uh, high-speed rail and the clean tech corridor and the river projects have to start taking hold. So um, I don't feel uh, all, you know, as I said, we are, you know, we try to address issues of um, transportation um, and really trying to understand sort of the whole distribution system, making sure that there was linkages between east and west we think agro-business and research in uh, with, with agriculture and agro-businesses would be really important. Uh, we see uh, a series on, on the west side, we see a series of uh, farms that actually grow poplars and uh, hemp and other things to help with some of the other industries. And on, on the east side, a lot of food and, uh, and implementing new technologies. And in terms of our performative bridges um, that allow for these not only uh, connections, uh, physical connections from east to west, we see, of course, the implementations of new technologies uh, for which, uh, at a larger scale, we really need opportunities in the city, even with solar power or any number of the new technologies that we're exploring with water, we really need uh, larger interventions to have that opportunity um, to, for these catalytic products um, 
that to actually take place. We see the, the area along uh, the, the heart of the site to actually be you know, only accessible to electric vehicles and keeping regular trucks and other things outside of the area and really trying to make it viable as a, as a community from which many, you know, so you could live here, work here, play here, and you could connect um, as a village to other villages in Los Angeles. Thank you. Okay, well, let's go a little deeper. I, I think, you know, we seem to have a general idea about the location and green and technology. Let's talk about some of the barriers to implementation. Anybody want to take that? I think uh, at the end of the day, um, if you get enough public support for something, um, you start getting, you start, and you, and you have a vision for something, you can really begin to move things forward. But until you, until you have a clear conception of what you're trying to do, things can linger for forever. Okay, well, I'll take that, but let me play devil's advocate for a second. One of the things that I saw missing, and Romel, you may want to speak to this, is this is a subject that might be close to your, your uh, involvement with the, with the competition, is I didn't see much on economics and, and how this would actually move forward. And my understanding is that the impulse to implement clean tap, and we'll take questions at the, at the end of the session, um, started from uh, a very important observation, which is the decaying economic core of the eastern edge of downtown, and an impetus to reintegrate new economic engines. So we started the Clean Tech originally with the idea of a light rail manufacturing facility to be located on the Clean Tech manufacturing site. Ramel, how do we actually find funding for this? Because this is not just a question of public policy. My belief is also that we have to bring the private sector along. Yeah, let me, let me kind of, I think you're half right in terms of um, what was the real kind of motivation and impetus of this. Because back in 2005 when the mayor came in, we, we laid out a very aggressive climate change plan. And we said in that plan that we need to be a very aggressive city in the way in which we mitigate and adapt to the inevitable around climate and how we as a, as, a, as a city would need to move forward in, in, in protecting our city. What did that mean? You know, we, so the conversations that we had with the environmental organizations stated the obvious, do the environmental mitigation. Our conversations with the economic and the business sector world said, you gotta deal with the economy. And so we said, well, the obvious, and we weren't the first ones to say this, was let's look at the green economy as the motivator to, to address some of the, our climate change challenges, which then led us to some of the economic um, realities that the city was facing early in uh, 05, 06, clean tech quarter came to fruition. But really, the, the, the kind of heart of this is, is something that is more than just, are we losing business? The heart of this is, how do we transform a new a model of how we do business that is both sustainable, good for our climate, and good for essentially the public health of the city. So it, it all kind of folds into all so that's how it, it all came up. And I wasn't surprised that economics was missing from this, you know, um, when I was looking at it. And, and not to say that it should have automatically been in there, but I wasn't surprised. And if it's not in there, is, it, is that okay? And I think, yeah, it's okay if it's not in there, because then we, that forces us to collaborate with those who are really, really strong in economics. But what this, what this competition did show me, in a real kind of personal way, and it leads to what Sam was talking about, and, and the question about you know, the implementation aspect of this is that sometimes we get in our own way. As, as a city entity, as government, as officials, we tend to get in our own way. And it's partly it's because a lot of things we don't know. And so when you look at competitions like this, you realize you know, there are a lot of folks that are a lot smarter than us. And let us make room for those folks to make it, you know, to, to make things happen. Of course, there's a sense of reality about how do you do the economics, but, but you gotta first start by saying there are a lot of folks that are a lot more creative, a lot more um, innovative, and certainly a lot, a lot more design-oriented. And, and for a city that, you know, is, that we tend to kind of get in our own way sometimes. And I think what this kind of showed me is, it's kind of move a little bit. Well, let me ask the competitors. I, I, I just wanted to add a lot of things to this because 
you know, we, we use the word clean tech, and I think it's a very, very broad term. And it, the clean tech corridor is not, it's, it's it, in a way, is for us to rethink from a really very, very small, humble, just backyard way of thinking about how we are going to be clean or green, all the way to uh, a, a new technology. I mean, it's a very broad. So, I mean, and any of those could apply to this topic. Um, so, if we if we start talking about Let's just look at the electrical car for a moment, even though I'm like the first one to uh, advocate for the new leaf. I, I could spend half an hour talking about that. But, um, but Eric brought up the, the notion of public policy. In Los Angeles and in a lot of cities, we have created mega city block, right? So mega city block means you have to use your car to go from one place to another. And we all know that you know we have a photograph of you know pedestrian zone friendly. Everybody likes that. Everybody say yeah, this is perfect. But on the other hand, everybody wants to have a car because you are not going to walk this block. So it's, it's, it's that is that kind of it's, it goes all the way from something that simple, right, to having a corridor where you um, give incentivized industry clean tech industry, this kind of incubator of, of, of clean tech technology to move here to, 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 to this area. That's the other thing, right? And then we keep on talking about the art district. I think the art district is one of the few, um, as a field of, of practice, which are very, very clean because they, they have they live, they, they have a certain community here, and they live here, and they would bring back things all the time. So they're kind of small garage industry, which could be connected to the art, who, which could happen here. So I mean, they, I'm just kind but of- This is a very interesting observation. So instead of saying, let's follow the money, let's follow the user. And maybe then I'd like to pose this question. You can talk about money, competitors, if you want to. But did you think about who this garage, and I brought this up at the beginning of, the, of uh, today's session, the industry may not have the same face in the 21st century that it had in the last century, the one before it. It may not make very large things anymore. It may make very small things on a just-in-time, I hate that word, basis. So any of you want to take this? Me? Okay. Yeah. I think uh, I, I, I would agree with the fact that uh, the creative industries in, in U.S. and in Western countries in general are going to be more developed. Uh, than, let's say, the large manufacturing industries. Uh, however, I do not think that you can make a strategy that completely excludes all, the, all these uh, parts, because in, in the end you're talking about a city and not just about uh, a small aspect of it. Uh, so I think as, as a way to tackle it would not be just to talk about what, what kind of industry or what kind of manufacturing would we have in the clean tech order, but to look much broader and, and say uh, what kind of technologies and what kind of lifestyle, what kind of uh, way of living in this corridor could we shape and could actually in the long run uh, sort of um, take over or sort of change the way people use or live in their city. And that's not, not a quick change. It's a very, I think it's a very slow change because like you said, it demands uh, an, a change of attitude and a change of uh, how you want to experience this one. But it has to start somewhere, it has to smart, start on a very basic uh, level, I think. And one of the basic levels is um, what is the pleasure of uh, going through your city and how can you create space that is actually nice and uh, efficient and um, sort of creates a productive environment for different kinds of industry to use uh, and to live as as a resident. And I and I think I think like, uh, like your entries uh, was the response to Los Angeles intersection of the four parking lot with the corner shopping mall. Yeah. I mean that that is that is exactly the, the kind of 
antidote to what LA is really famous for, which is the corner shopping mall for big, um, you know, asphalt parking, and, 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 and it's kind of promoted kind of color um, culture. And, and so, uh, so pushing away from the car culture is, is, is a different hub that, that create, give incentive for new development and new neighborhood um, and, and new um, uh, kind of uh, economic revitalization of that, of that area, which is combined, combined with the, what you call the uh, evaporator yeah. things, with, uh, and, and at the same time it's a node for public transportation as well. They, they actually combine three levels of um, infrastructure, you could say, mm -hmm. and the public space uh, as seen as an infrastructure, social infrastructure for people to use. Uh, then there is the, the sort of green side of it, which creates the green streets that incentivates the, the plots around. And then there is the, the infrastructural part of, the, of what we call then solar evaporators which is that they could become nodes in a transport network and you can sort of create a two-step network where it becomes enjoyable to walk or cycle to this thing and from there take a train or a bus or a tram, whatever the, the, the way is, to another of these hubs and get out there and become in a sort of uh, other focal point where you walk, or you cycle, or you go to your uh, destination. So you sort of create like small microcosmoses within the city that are more heterogenic than the large patches that it currently has, which sort of naturally involves driving all the time. And now you could say, you would still, I think it's impossible to envision a city without a car, but uh, you could actually sort of, uh, how do you say, uh, add another dimension to living and going through the city. Well, that is an uh, important commonality in all three of the uh, entrants that were, uh, that were selected, which is if you look on the boards, the automobile is absent. And that's a very radical view of Los Angeles. Um, and then you sort of throw it back to any of the three schemes. How do you envision the automobile interfacing with your scheme, or is the idea that it is a technology that fades away from our urban fabric as your solutions are? Uh, could I respond to that? I guess. Sure. Yes. <laughs> We are a series of smaller villages and not just one humongous city. And there are many people who actually, uh, you know, really identify with a, a certain area and take care of all their business in a certain area and don't always necessarily need the call all the time. And uh, Romel's point about Ciclovia and other critical mass and all these groups of young people that do bicycling. Um, we're on the red line in our office, and I would say that 80% of the people actually don't have cars or don't come to work with a car already. Um, I would like to, uh, in terms of what would make these projects possible in economics, and since um, uh, if one is political will and a true and a committed you know, ambition to make uh, the work and, you know, as it happens, this corridor is along the LA River and the LA River has the potential of creating um, a lot of uh, significant changes uh, around the city, along its 54 miles. Um, and uh, so political will is critical. Uh, 
we tried to uh, address the economic issues and came up, of course, with some of the classic incentives. Um, we think there's already uh, a, a group, a, a rather large group of young firms that are, you know, locating in this area. We, you know, the other night I met um, the owner of a skateboarding company that is, you know, a stone's throw away from here. Um, we have to make it uh, a, certainly a, a, a place that, in, in our case, our submission really tried to deliver a, per, a performative type of in, intervention so that people really related and became um, totally conscious of the way they, you know, used water, the way they got around the city, um, that, that there was a certain level that they were inspired and uh, to, to be part of this sort of in incubator village uh, that had, you know, a lot of creative folks. And in, in San Diego, as an example, uh, a lot of creative industries located to the beautiful view of the ocean. Um, in, in San Francisco, in the Mission area, the same over a 10-year period. There's a huge biotech uh, quarter that you know uh, really grew out of the ambition of certain developers and uh, and, and researchers. Uh, I think that the younger generation, uh, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, certainly the younger generation from my office um, and my children are really interested in in living in the dynamic of uh, you know environment and that down gritty downtown and uh, this this place is a really rich place to be it has you know let's not forget what LA is about um, it's it's a, a dream for many people and if nothing else the weather is going to keep us all here so we got to make it um, a more interesting place to live so I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to open, uh, if we may now, uh, the panel's questions from the audience and some discussions. We have some other competitors here. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to acknowledge our jury, um, some of whom are here today. But just, just to sort of uh, mention that we brought jurors, uh, in fact, from all over the city and all over the country. Um, in particular, we were joined by Stan Allen, who is the Dean of the School of Architecture at, the, uh, at Princeton University. Uh, Ming Funk is here with us, who is Director of Academic Affairs here at Sire. Thank you, Ming, for your participation on the jury and, of course, with today's panel and support for this, this effort. Um, Chris Levon could not join us, but he is uh, Environmental Compliance and Services Department Manager of Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority, who were also our partners last year, we're thankful for their participation. Uh, Michael Maltzen, Principal of Michael Maltzen Architecture, a uh, very important uh, architect here in town, and also somebody working in this district, specifically at the one Santa Fe site across the street. Dennis McLean, uh, who's taught here, who is partner and president at Olin Landscape Architects in Philadelphia. Um, Romel Pascal, again, thank you, City of Los Angeles, Deputy Mayor for Energy and the Environment. We really appreciate your participation, your intelligence in this, this I think, very important discussion, and, and we're so thankful that your office has been able to participate and support this. Um, Nick, Nicholas Patsaras, who is past president of the Board of Water and uh, Power Commissioners and former board member of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, a uh, wonderful man and, and a really uh, lifelong voice here in the city. Uh, dedicated to thinking about issues like this. And finally, uh, Donald Spivak, who could not join us, but uh, as one of our sponsors, Deputy Chief of Operations and Policy, Community Redevelopment Agency in Los Angeles. Um, so with that, let me also just thank our sponsors. It's uh, really crucial that we acknowledge the participation and uh, support of both the public and private sectors. So just really quickly, uh, we thank the Architects newspaper for partnering with us in, in the media capacity. Uh, in particular, again, the Office of the Mayor of Los Angeles, the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Los Angeles, the Quirkus Trust, Latin and Wat Watkins, LLP, the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority, Clean Tech LA, 
the U.S. Green Building Council, Los Angeles chapter, and finally, this project has been made possible in part by a grant from the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs, uh, the DCA. They've been a wonderful uh, sponsor. Uh, lastly, I want to just quickly thank uh, the students in our program. I don't know where they've gone uh, in the sci-fi program. There's some here. I see Yuan, and I don't know what happened to Thomas and Sean and Wanda. They're all gone now. They worked very hard to put this together. So I thank you guys for your dedication, taking time out of your academic activities to put the show up in the library. Um, and then finally, I want to thank all the staff here at SIRE. The list is very long, but I would like to thank everybody in the development office, communications office, publications office, graphics, finance, uh, the office of uh, the chief operating officer, I don't know when he went, and if I forgot anybody, um, thank you all for, for helping and supporting this. You guys made Okay, you know what I think we can do, I mean, unless somebody has a pressing question that has to be answered, we can also continue the discussion upstairs since we do have wine and food that's waiting for you. Um, why don't we do that? All right, thank you everybody very much.